Excuse me. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City's April 22nd, 2021 virtual hearing. My name is Nicholas Blendy, and I am the De Deputy Executive Secretary for the Board of Liquor License Commissioners. I'm going to begin by going over an outline of what will be uh, done today, which you can see on the screen. And just as a reminder to everyone, we are broadcasting live on Charm TV. As you can tell, we are in a virtual hearing setting. We uh, use a WebEx, Cisco WebEx platform, uh, just like the City Council and the Planning Department and BMZA use. Um, the basics of it to fully utilize uh, anyone with a uh, access to a, a laptop, an iPad, a smartphone, or a device with uh, camera and microphone capabilities can participate using uh, that technology. Um, members of the public have to have the WebEx app, and you can see the link for today's hearing and the information there in the bullet points on the PowerPoint. Uh, we do suggest that if you do use uh, some your technological advice that you make sure you download everything and have everything properly updated right you know not right before the hearing just in case uh, there would be any glitches and if any member of the public does not have uh, technology that will allow them to use that application they are invited to use the phone number there at the bottom of the PowerPoint with the access code which is also available on our website and you'll be able to listen live but listen only to the hearing you won't be able to speak um, all materials, evidence, and related items for today's docket are available on our website under the hearing schedule link and the hyperlinks for April 22nd, 2021. Uh, we do inform the public and applicants that the board observes a 48-hour rule for online hearings, meaning that all evidence that they shall consider today uh, had to have been turned in uh, by 11 a.m. Thursday, April 22nd, 2021. Anything that's submitted afterwards will be added to the record, but will not be available to the board during the hearing. And all all evidence should be submitted to our assistant executive secretary, Ms. Stacy Russell. And we do not uh, we are not open to the public, so we are not accepting any documents in person due to the COVID safety uh, uh, considerations. Any amendments that any applicants uh, need to have made. Uh, uh, will were not be accepted after April 8th, 2021 for any case being heard today. And if you do need to amend anything, your case will automatically be postponed um, since we're well after April 8th. In addition, uh, all licensees and applicants should have uh, received something in the mail in addition to uh, an email notifying them of their time for their virtual hearing. The procedures for today, I'm currently reading the uh, instructions. As we move forward, I will call each case in order as it's listed on the short docket, um, and then I will uh, move the applicant and any uh, representative that they uh, may have uh, representing them today into the panelist room and ask you to identify yourselves, and they and any of their witnesses will be sworn in by our court reporter. Um, the board will then uh, provide an opportunity for the applicant and his or her representative to present their case to the board. The board may ask questions of the attorney or, or of the applicant. Um, at the conclusion of the case, the, the chair will ask any individuals who are on the call and have, any or and have access to the correct technology if they would like to testify uh, on the application, either in support or opposition. And if there's an individual who does wish to testify, uh, I will then ask if uh, he or she can use the raise your hand feature um, in the WebEx platform at the bottom under the, I think it's the, yeah, it's there at the bottom. And uh, I will then recognize you and you will be moved into the panel and you will have to be sworn in uh, by our court reporter before offering any testimony because we do everything under oath. Um, at the conclusion of all testimony and evidence, the board will then vote on the application before them, and the assistant executive secretary uh, will then read any exhibits into the record. And we remind you that while serving in its quasi-judicial capacity today, the board is authorized only to hear testimony and evidence related to cases that are before it today. They're not authorized to discuss any other cases or any policy matters uh, during these virtual hearings, and uh, we will not entertain any of that. 
the ground rules for today's hearing. Uh, we ask that you please mute yourself when you're not speaking to minimize feedback and noise. Uh, when you are speaking, we ask that you please identify yourself and state your spelling of your name prior to speaking and that you speak slowly and in a clear voice so that the court reporter understands exactly what is being said and who is saying it. <clears throat> As I stated above, or earlier rather, uh, please note this event will run live on Charm TV and that we do have a court reporter present. Any individual who uses profanity, is disrespectful or unruly, uh, may be expelled from today's virtual hearing. As I said earlier, all attendees, applicants, licensees, and any member of the public who wishes to provide testimony today during the hearing must be sworn in prior to giving your testimony. Uh, we will take no physical evidence at these proceedings, and as stated earlier, there will absolutely be no uh, amendments to the application entertained during today's hearing. We ask that everyone is prepared. Um, we ask that if you're in a location that's not private that you find a a quiet space with good light and a strong connection so you can be seen and heard clearly we ask that you be present and not be multitasking so when your case is called that you're ready and above all we ask that you are patient with yourself and others as we navigate the virtual environment um, with that mr chairman i've read all the instructions and the dockets on the screen let me know when you're ready to proceed let's call the first case okay I believe I've moved counsel and applicant into the uh, panel. Uh, the first case for today's docket applicant is Diana M. Coyle, Canton Crossing Wine and Spirits LLC, trading as Canton Wine and Spirits, 3975 Boston Street, 21224. Uh, applicant is a uh, Class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor, liquor license holder. This is an application to transfer the physical location of a BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license presently located at 3831 Boston Street to 3975 Boston Street and requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages. There is no change in ownership and Ms. Hecker is counsel and I think I have everyone in. Ms. Hecker, do you have everyone on the panel that you need? Uh, yes, good morning. Um, Caroline Hecker, Rosenberg, Martin Greenberg, on behalf of the applicant. I'm looking at the panel. I see Ms. O'Connor, who is the manager of Canton Crossing Wine and Spirits. I don't see Ms. Coyle. Oh, there she is. N now she has been moved in. Excellent. Ms. Coyle is our individual licensee applicant. Okay, good morning, uh, Ms. Hecker. Uh, will they be testifying or are you going to proffer? I'd like to proceed by way of a proffer if that's acceptable. That's fine. Okay. Uh, I had submitted a series of exhibits earlier this week to the board. I believe you should have them in front of you. This is an application to transfer the BD7 liquor license that's held by Canton Crossing Wine and Spirits to a new location within the Canton Crossing Shopping Center. Um, th this uh, establishment has been in operation since nearly the beginning of the shopping center when it was originally constructed. Um, the shopping center was constructed pursuant to a planned unit development that was enacted as City Council Ordinance 11571, and there should be a copy of that in your file. Um, the Under the original PUD, the uh, package goods store was permitted by right. But then following the enactment of Transform Baltimore, the new comprehensive zoning code in 2017, the PUD was repealed because the second phase of the shopping center could be constructed by right based on the uh, new comprehensive zoning, the C3 zoning uh, that was assigned to, to this area. Uh, there's a copy of the ordinance that repealed the PUD in your um, file as well. Once the PUD was repealed and the property became subject to the underlying zoning, the uh, package goods store became a conditional use subject to city council approval in the C3 zone. So while the existing store was grandfathered in under the PUD, the new, um, the new location will require approval by city council ordinance. So to that end, city council bill number 21-64 was introduced on Monday evening to authorize the use of the new location. Um, in addition, this is one of the old BD7 licenses that operates as a packaged goods store as opposed to a tavern. So we intend to convert the BD7 license to an A7 license. That also requires approval by the city council and to that end city council resolution 21-42R was also introduced on Monday evening to authorize that um, conversion of the license to an A7 license. So as I said, Canton Crossing Wine and Spirits has been in Canton Crossing since 2014. They haven't had any um, adverse incidents, any citations or violations. 
Um, they'd like to continue to stay in the shopping center. Uh, they're looking for a little bit more space and they have uh, worked out an arrangement with the owner of the shopping center to move to a new location in the phase two portion of the shopping center near the um, PetSmart and the Nordstrom Rack. Uh, in the file, you'll see there's a site plan showing the existing and proposed locations of the store within the shopping center. The existing location is identified with a red box um, and the new location has a red circle around it. Their new location is about 4,000 square feet compared to the uh, 3,000 square feet that they currently have, so it'll allow them a little bit more space. And a copy of their floor plan is also included in the file. Ms. Coyle, who's present here today, has been on the license as the individual licensee since the uh, license was originally issued. She's not involved in intimately in the day-to-day -day operations of the, the establishment. Ms. O'Connor is the day-to-day -day general manager. She's present here as well. They're both available to answer any questions the board may have, but they're both familiar with the rules and regulations of the liquor board and pledge to continue to abide by them. Uh, we have met with the local community associations. There should be a letter of support in your file from the Canton Community Association. We also reached out to the Brewers Hill neighbors. They had no objection to the transfer of the license. Um, and as I said, we're happy to answer any questions you may have, but, but with that, we would request that the board approve the transfer of the license. Okay, thank you. Ms. Eckert, just to clarify, so uh, they're moving within the shopping center to get more space, uh, and the city council needs to approve the new location as well as the conversion of the license? Yes, that's correct. Okay, but we're, uh, uh, Mr. Bundy, we're authorized to go ahead uh, pending that approval, right? Yes, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Okay, um, do the commissioners have any questions? No, I have no questions. I, the only question I have is when it comes back, Ms. Hecker, will it come back if the ordinance is approved for the A7 conversion? Does that come back to us? It doesn't. It's an administrative process to convert a BD7 to an A7. So we'll do okay. that administratively once the resolution is passed. Right. Okay. Thank you. Nothing further. Okay. Uh, Ms. Bunny, do we have anyone else who wishes to testify on this matter? If any member of the public wishes to testify on this matter, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Mr. Chair, I do not see anyone who wishes to testify. Okay. I mean, Ms. Hecker, again, you've given us a very comprehensive uh, amount of exhibits and material and uh, an explanation of what you're doing. I think that's why you're not faced with many questions. Uh, on the basis of all those materials, the uh, those contained in the application, those exhibited, uh, submitted by exhibit for this hearing today based on your proper and including the uh, letter of approval from the Canton Community Association. I would vote to approve this application to transfer the location of the BD7 license from 3831 Boston Street to 3975 Boston Street, uh, requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages and all of that pending approval of the location by the Baltimore City Council. Commissioner, uh, based upon a review of the evidence and, and a proffer of uh, Ms. Uh, Hecker, uh, I would also vote to, to approve the application to transfer the location of a class B, uh, BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license, uh, and also and also the transfer from the uh, location of 3831 Boston Street to 3975 Boston Street. I join my colleagues based on the application and the um, proffers from Ms. Hecker, I too would approve the application to transfer location of this BD7 license presently located at 3831 Boston Street to 3975 Boston Street with delivery of alcoholic beverages pending, of course, approval by the city council and its ordinance. Thank you very much. Ms. Russell. I'd like to call exhibits for the record. Board exhibit one, business plan. Exhibit two, letter of support from Kent Community Association, dated 3-30-21. Thank you. That concludes okay. this matter before the board. Um, applicant and council will receive uh, follow-up instructions on what next steps to take via mail. Um, Mr. Chairman, are we ready for the next? Yes, case. The next case is also client of Ms. Hecker 
and give me one second and I will move the applicant into the panel. Second case before the board today, applicant Jesse Galston, Firefly Farms Liquors LLC, trading as Firefly Farms Market, 3300 Clipper Mill Road, stalls number 7, 21211 in Baltimore, Maryland. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a Class A beer, wine, and liquor license, and the application to transfer the location of said license presently located at 913 West Baltimore Street to the new location at 3300 Clipper Mill Road, stall number seven. And Ms. Hecker is counsel. Thank you. Uh, again, for the record, Caroline Hecker, Rosenberg, Martin Greenberg, on behalf of the applicant, I'm joined by our individual licensee applicant, Jesse Goldston, who I believe is in the panel here. Okay. Mr. Chair, well. uh, yes, I would like to proceed by way of a proffer, if that's okay. Go, go ahead, please. Thank you. Um, this is an application to transfer ownership and location of a Class A license. Um, the, the license is was previously located at 913 West Baltimore Street. It was one of the locations that was a non-conforming A license in a residential zone that was required to close as part of the um, amortization of liquor stores under the new zoning code that was enacted. So this will relocate a Class A license out of a residential area into a more appropriately zoned commercial property. Um, which is the Whitehall Mill Market. So I included in the file of exhibits that I submitted earlier this week, a couple of news articles about the redevelopment of the Whitehall Mill. Um, it was an old flour mill in Hamden um, that David Tufero uh, redeveloped a couple of years back. It was a $22 million renovation of the historic mill into a mixed use project that includes office space apartments and the Whitehall Mill Market, which operates similarly to other markets in Baltimore, such as Belvedere Square and the Mount Vernon Market. Um, they opened in June of 2020 and, and during the pandemic, and uh, they have, have been very successful uh, in general within the market. Um, I've included in the file a floor plan showing the entire market. The market operates pursuant to a marketplace liquor license that covers a lot of the internal area within the marketplace, but it does not cover stall number seven. Stall number seven is outside of the marketplace license premises. And we are requesting that this Class 8 license be transferred to that location. I realized that I neglected to include a copy of the PUD in the exhibits that I submitted earlier this week. Whitehall Cotton Mill is a planned unit development that was enacted as um, a city council ordinance that specifically limits the number of liquor licenses that can be issued within the PUD, but it does specifically contemplate the issuance of the marketplace license and a Class 8 license here. So, um, Firefly Market operates a stall um, within the marketplace. Currently, they are a handcrafted cheese company. They focus on natural ingredients and ethical treatment of farmers and animals. They have a flagship market in Deep, Deep Creek, Maryland, um, and I included in the file a little excerpt from their website showing a photo of their current location. They'd like to do something similar within the Whitehall Market uh, here. And I've included as well a floor plan showing their, I mean, it's a very um, limited floor plan just because it's a very small space, but they would like to offer um, out the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premises consumption um, from their, their market location here. Mr. Galston is the manager of Firefly Farms at this location. He has six years of food and beverage experience um, in, in the alcoholic beverage and, and cheese industries. He is familiar with the rules and regulations of the liquor board and agrees to abide by them. He has completed the alcoholic beverage safety training course as well. Um, this is a, uh, there is a public need and desire for the license. Um, the, the market has been very successful in adding the availability of off-premise sales um, to allow a small package goods store within the market will create an additional amenity for the, for the space. Um, there are no other similar uh, licensees in the area. There are no other Class A licenses authorized within the market. So this is the only one that would, uh, would possibly exist. So it does uh, also offer a uniqueness of services, and it will not have any negative impact on public health, safety, or general welfare. Um, obviously, we'll have to operate harmoniously with the existing marketplace license and the uh, surrounding mixed-use project as well. So with that, we're happy to answer any questions, but we would request that the board approve the transfer to this location. Thank you. Do commissioners have any questions? I have no questions. Just a general question. I'm not that familiar with this market. Um, are there other stalls that are outside of the market license area? 
I believe there's one other stall that I don't think they have a tenant for yet. Um, I believe it was not included in the market area, but um, I don't know. I don't know what's going to go there ultimately. Okay. Very interesting. Okay. Thank you. Nothing further. Thank you. Do we have others who wish to testify, Mr. Bundy? If any member of the public wishes to testify on this matter, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx uh, platform. Mr. Chair, I do not see anyone uh, who wishes to testify. Thank you. All right. So, uh, uh, Ms. Hecker, on the basis then of the materials that you have submitted uh, in the application, as well as exhibits for the hearing today, and on the basis of your proffer, um, I would vote to approve the application to transfer ownership and location of this Class A uh, beer, wine, and liquor license presently located at 913 West Baltimore Street to 3300 Clipper Mill Road, Stall 7. Commissioner? Uh, Commissioner Guy, upon a review of the evidence and the testimony and a, and a proffer presented by Mrs. Hecker, I would also uh, vote to approve uh, the transfer of ownership and the location of the Class A beer, wine, and liquor license presently located at 913 West Baltimore Street to 3300 Clipper Mill Road, Stall 7. Uh, based upon the application, the property of Ms. Hecker, I too would approve the application to transfer ownership and location of this Class A beer, wine, and liquor license presently located at 913 West Baltimore Street to 3300 Clipper Mill Road, Stall 7. Ms. Russell? Thank you, Mr. for the record. What is it, but one business plan? Thank you, Ms. Hecker. Thank you very much. Good luck. That that concludes this matter before the board uh, applicant and council will receive instructions uh, following up on next steps via mail mr Thank chair you. are you ready for the next case yes we move council and the applicant into the panel uh, Applicant is represented by uh, Council Leanne Schreckengost, and this applicant is Amir Ali Yazdi, Canton Pinnacle LLC, trading as Uno Pizzeria and Grill, 3821 Boston Street, 21224. And this is an application to transfer ownership with continuation of outdoor table service of a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. Good morning, Ms. Shek and Gus. Would you identify yourself for the record, please? Royston Muller, McLean and Reed here on behalf of the applicant. Are you going to proffer or are they going to have testimony? I would like to proceed by way of proffer. You may, go ahead. Thank you very much. On the line is Amir Yazdi. He is the sole owner of Canton Pinnacle LLC. Um, who is the applicant for this license transfer. This was formerly the Red Robin restaurant at the Canton Crossing Center. Um, like, as I indicated, Mr. Yazi is a sole owner of Canton Pinnacle LLC. He's a Baltimore City resident, and he's also a current licensee for the Uno Pizzeria and Grill located at the Pratt Street Pavilion. He took that over in 2019, and they have had no violations since he took it over. So he's opening a second location here at the Canton, at the Canton um, Crossing Center. He anticipates having 25 to 40 employees. 15 to 20 of which will be involved in the sale or service of alcohol. All of those employees undergo an internal proprietary alcohol awareness training program, and all the managers will be certified through the Serve Safe state approved alcohol awareness training program. Their carding policy is to card anybody who looks under the age of 40, and they do not accept a vertical identification. Their hours of operate, proposed hours of operation are Sunday through Thursday from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Friday and Saturday from 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Mr. Yazdi met with the Canton Community Association on April 12th. There is a letter of support which was in, um, submitted yesterday, so I'm not sure that it made it into the board's file or not, but um, it's signed by Douglas Kaufman, the chair of the Economic Development Committee, and is in the board's record in support of the transfer of this license. As this is an existing licensed establishment, the transfer of this license will not have an impact on the existing license holders in the area, nor will it have a negative impact on the health, safety, and welfare of the community. And we ask that the board approve this transfer to Mr. Yazdi. Okay, thank you. The commissioners have any questions? I have none. 
Just one question. I'm sorry, I keep asking things. Uh, any does Mr. Yazdi has he had any issues in Frederick or Ellicott City with his license? He has not. Okay, thank he has you. Not. Okay, thank you, Commissioners. Uh, do we have public comment, Mr. Blundy? If any member of the public wishes to testify on this matter before the board, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any member of the public who wishes to testify. Okay. Uh, Ms. Schechengrass, um, on the basis of the materials contained in the application and your extensive proper as well as the support from the Canton Community Association, I vote to approve the application to transfer ownership with continuation of outdoor table service of this Class B beer, wine, and liquor license. Commissioners? Commissioner, Commissioner Guy, upon a review of the evidence and the proffer of Mrs. Uh, Schreckengoss, I also would vote to approve the application to transfer ownership with continuation of outdoor table service. Based upon the applications and the the application the proffer from Ms. Schreckengost, I too would approve the application to transfer ownership with continuation of outdoor table service. Thank you, Ms. Russell. I posted it for the record that support from Kent Community Association dated for, sorry, 4-21-21. Thank you, folks. Good luck with you. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest Back of your day. That concludes this matter before the board, applicant and council receive a follow up uh, on next steps via mail. Um, Mr. Chair, are you ready for the next case? Yes, sir. Let's see. Moving folks in. Hmm. So Mr. Hurdle is counsel. Uh, Mr. Hurdle, your client, I cannot make them a panelist, but I can unmute them. But I guess if you may be going by proffer, I'll just call the case and we'll go from there. Um, the next case before the board, applicant Michael Cohn and Mark Brown, No Land Beyond LLC, trading as No Land Beyond, 2125 Maryland Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21218. This is an application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment and requesting additional outdoor table service and delivery of alcoholic beverages of a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license uh, already at that location. Uh, Mr. Hurdle is counsel, and as I stated, I cannot move his uh, client into the panel, so. Uh, good morning, Mr. Hurdle. You wanna identify yourself for the record, please? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Abraham Hurdle on behalf of No Land Beyond LLC, trading as no land beyond at 2125 Maryland Avenue. Um, if I may be a proffer, um, the existing corporation that is the current license holder is going to stay on. The operations of the business will remain identical with the exception of the additional outdoor seating. Uh, Mr. Cohn and Mr. Brown, who are going to be the new licensees, um, they have been with the company since, I guess, creation while it was being uh, built out the first handful of months that's been operated and since then. Um, they are familiar with the operations. I believe that they are both alcohol awareness certified and will remain such. And they will continue to operate the location as it has been for, I think they've been open for about 14 or 15 months, um, but it's been a tough time during 2020. Um, but otherwise there should be no operational changes with the exception of the additional outdoor seating. Uh, zoning approval has been granted to that. I think there's some inspections that we have to finalize. Um, otherwise, again, it will continue operating as it has. Okay. And what's the nature of their live entertainment at that location? Typically, they have some small bands. The area is a mixed use commercial and residential area. Um, they have a basement that is sound insulated um, and they plan to have, uh, again, some small bands. I think they've had a couple in the past. For the most part, the reason we have the live entertainment added is that it is a board game bar. Um, they have like Magic the Gathering parties and board game release events at the location. Beyond the sale of alcohol and food, um, they also sell retail board games and things of that nature. And that's been helping them during this recent pandemic. Okay. Thank you. So commissioners have any questions? 
I have none. No questions. Uh, do we have public comment, Mr. Blundy? If any member of the public wishes to testify on this matter before the board, please use the raise your hand feature on the WebEx platform. Mr. Chairman, I do not see anyone who wishes to testify. Okay, uh, Mr. Hurdle, then on the basis of the materials contained in the application and your proffer and uh, the statements that you provided to us, I would vote to approve the application to transfer ownership of continued live entertainment, requesting outdoor table service and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Commissioner? Commissioner Guy, upon a review of the evidence and a proffer of Mr. Hurdle, I also would approve the application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment with outdoor table service and delivery of alcoholic beverages. So based upon the application and a proffer from Mr. Hurdle, I too would approve the application to transfer ownership with continuation of live entertainment, outdoor table service and delivery of alcoholic beverages. Ms. Russell? No, as if it's for the record. All right, thank you, Mr. Hurdle. Good luck. Thank you, Chris. have a good day. That concludes this matter before the board. Applicants and council will receive follow-up information on next steps via mail. Mr. Chair, are you ready for the next hearing? Yes. The next matter before the Board of Liquor License Commissioners today is applicant Ripjeet Singh and Gregory Miller, Bmore Liquors LLC, trading as Mimi's Discount Liquors. 2607 to 09 Greenmount Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland 21218. And this is an application to transfer ownership and requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages for a Class A beer, wine, and liquor license. And Mr. Kadensky is counsel. Good morning, Mr. Kadensky. Will you identify yourself for the record, please? For the record, Melvin J. Kadensky representing the applicant. Uh, are you going to proper on this one? Yeah, yes, I will. Um, for the record, uh, the applicant in this case has had prior experience uh, working for uh, about four years at a Decker's Liquors out on uh, US-1 in uh, Hartford County, never had any problems uh, buying the property uh, at that location, uh, is waiting for approval of an SBA loan. I will take the alcohol awareness course. I'll be two or three employees. They will also have the alcohol awareness course. Uh, he was familiarizing himself with the rules and regulations of the liquor board and uh, will make sure that he uh, adheres to all the rules and regulations with regard to the uh, video um, cameras and so forth. And we'll get them linked into the current system. Um, I think the uh, current licensee has that. And um, under the uh, new section of the uh, law, we'll make sure they are um, put into um, touch with the uh, Baltimore City Liquor Board, have the video on, cameras on for uh, 24 hours um, uh, a day. He will operate it along with um, the, the members of the people that are there. Is, is Mr. Miller just the resident on the license? He's just a resident. He's not going to have any active part in there. I mean, I, I wish that somewhere along the line we could get that change, but uh, that's not what it is now. Okay. Um, so it's a packaged goods store, uh, and it says it has a grocery store? Yeah, it has, it. Um, it's a combination thereof. Okay. Um, commissioners have questions? I have none. I have, I have a couple of questions. Uh, Mr. Kaduski, ha has there been any community outreach on this one? No, and there's nobody around there has really gotten in touch with, with them. Um, they've been uh, talking with the uh, owners there, but it, apparently it's a, a pretty nice location. They're not, there's nobody there that, but they would if we could, somebody would send us uh, who the name of the group would be, they would be more than happy to meet with them. Okay, well, I, maybe Mr. Ockheimer can help with that. And then, you know, um, I was interested in, in this because, in this matter, because uh, there's a note that the, there's a BMZA approval for this to operate also as a grocery store, as the chairman suggested. And uh, can you speak to that element of it? It's it's sort of a personal interest in terms of how can we support these kinds of packaged goods stores with having groceries and addressing the food desert issue. In other words, there's lots of programs out there 
uh, that we can help connect this licensee with. But can you just speak to that part of the of the establishment? Well, I mean, I know they would uh, um, agree to continue the operation of the, of the food at that location to serve the, the community. Uh, I think it goes hand in hand when people would come in for their uh, groceries if they would decide to get their alcoholic ber beverages that would that would all work and I think since the um, they have the approval for it it seems to be something that uh, has existed and that they're um, you know is thriving at least at that location you know it's a rough location as well you know so I give anybody credit that wants to go ahead and do business uh, in that area and uh, they plan on continue that operation. So I would uh, encourage them to reach out to the Harwood Association. I believe that's the appropriate association. And then um, if if the licensee is interested in learning more about uh, how to bolster the, the, the food, food component of their establishment, then they should certainly reach out to our staff. And we can help connect them with some resources. No, oh, I'll make sure they do that, you know, um, if they're contacted, okay. Okay, thanks. Do we have uh, members of the public who wish to testify, Mr. Blundy? Uh, yes, we do, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, I am moving Christina Williams into uh, the panel now. And uh, yes, there I see is, uh, you need to turn your camera on, uh, Ms. Williams. Should yes. be any, there you are, okay. All right, let's uh, swear Ms. Williams in, please. Please raise your right. Please raise your right hand. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, to help you God or under penalty of perjury? I do. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Williams, tell us uh, what you'd like to uh, testify to. Yes, um, thank you all for allowing me to speak. I had no intention of speaking today, but um, after speaking with the community earlier this week when I saw this available, I mean, come up on the hearing list, I wanted to make sure I was at least in attendance. And after hearing Mr. Kandinsky's uh, uh, presentation, I'm a little concerned about the misrepresentation of um, the ability to outreach to the community. I know for a fact over the last at least two years, maybe three since I've been in this community as the executive director of the Charles Village Community Benefits District, um, that the members of the Harwood community have reached out to that business multiple times. They've even gone as far as to beautify the business out front with flower plots um, that they keep up on a regular basis. There has been a, a concern around um, a language barrier, but have even gone as far as to bring in someone who could help translate. Um, with the business. So to say that there was no um, communication or opportunity to do outreach is um, a complete misrepresentation of the work that that community does day in and day out in order to make sure that the businesses are aware of who they are um, and that they hold to a standard that the community is pressing for everyone to keep their district clean and safe. And so along with that, in terms of safety, there are a lot of concerns around the appearance of the business, um, loitering that happens outside of the business, um, and the willingness from the business owners to engage with the community to make significant changes around those things. Um, and I, I'm glad you mentioned Matt Ackerheimer, who is very involved in working with our organization and the Harwood community and um, knows full well the lengths that the Harwood Community Association have gone to to engage with, um, with Mimi's Discount Liquors on multiple occasions over the last several years. So um, while we're not in opposition um, of a transfer of ownership, would request that this committee consider heavily um, asking these owners to work more closely with this community without using the um, without using the uh, the notion that there is no one to speak with because that's this is a very engaged community and they have regular meetings every first Monday of the month, never has failed even during COVID. Um, and they, I know they've been invited to attend. Thank you. I think we'll ask Mr. Rockheimer to coordinate um, a communication between the applicant and Harwood so that we make sure it continues, okay? Thank you very much. Um, any further? Uh, nothing, nothing further, but the applicants would cooperate. And one thing that was misrepresentation is was that they just didn't have any communications. They would communicate at the appropriate time. and. 
Mr. Hockheimer sets him up, I'm sure they'll be glad to meet with him. Um, anyone else, Mr. Blendy? Are there any additional members of the public who wish to testify on this matter? Mr. Chair, I do not see any additional members of the public who wish to testify. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kodensky, then on the basis of the materials contained in the application, your proffer and the testimony uh, we received from Ms. Williams, I would vote to approve the application to transfer ownership of this Class A uh, beer, wine, and liquor license requesting delivery of alcoholic beverages. And I'm going to ask uh, our staff to make sure that Matt Alcomer, uh coordinates further communication between the applicants and the Harwood Association so that they can have ongoing dialogue about issues at that location. Thank you. Uh, commissioners? Commissioner Guy, uh, upon the review of the evidence and, and the proffer of Mr. Kadinsky, I would also vote to approve the uh, transfer of ownership with delivery of alcoholic beverages. I would also uh, ask that the, the, that the owner would, would work uh, closer with the community. Based upon the application and the proffers from Mr. Kadinsky, I too would approve the application to transfer ownership with the delivery of alcoholic beverages. And based upon Ms. Williams' testimony, which I very much appreciate, would also strongly uh, advise and encourage the licensee to meet with the community as soon as possible. Uh, and if uh, Mr. Alkheimer can help uh, facilitate that, that would be great. Thank you, Ms. Russell. Oh, is it for the record? Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Kadensky. Good luck to them. All right, thank you. Uh, that concludes uh, this matter before the board. Uh, applicant and council will receive follow up uh, via US mail with further instructions on this application for transfer and almost certainly an email from Mr. Akamer by the conclusion of today's hearings because that's how diligent he is. Um, thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, are you ready for uh, the next case? Yes, please. Uh, for, for the record, on the short docket, the sixth case of Rajinder Singh, Manpreet Singh, and Victor White, MK Singh, e Inc., trading as Pizza Man Seafood at 5514 Bel Air Road. That application has been withdrawn and the file is closed. So that leaves only one additional hearing before the board today, which is represented by Mr. Fogelman, who should be in the panel. Applicant Claudia Castro and Diana Rodriguez, Wendy's Bar Incorporated, trading as Byzantio Cafe Bar, 4616 to 4618 Eastern Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21224. And this is an application to transfer ownership with continuation of outdoor table service of a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. Ms. Fogelman, will you identify yourself for the record, please? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Steve Fogelman, I am joined here. Let me, uh, I, I need to bring my clients in on the video. Okay, thank you very much. Stephen W. Fogelman on behalf of Claudia Castro and Diana Rodriguez, who are here with me today. Good morning. Good morning. Are you going to proceed by proper or are they going to testify? Indeed, I will, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Um, this is the transfer of uh, really licensee only. It's the same corporation, um, a bar that's been around for quite some time uh, at 4616 Eastern Avenue. Um, Ms. Castro has worked in the bar business since she arrived in the United States. Uh, she spent about 12 years working in bars in this area and since 2015 has indeed been the manager of this very bar. Uh, she runs and manages a good bar. It uh, doesn't attract a young crowd or a rowdy crowd in any way. The um, bar did violate rule 4.01A in 2018 when uh, a cadet was sold an alcoholic beverage to an employee of that bar. Uh, Ms. Castro let that employee go immediately. So she certainly is aware um, of the importance that this board has with respect to underage drinking. She reports to me that she will card anyone who appears to be 30 or younger. 
Ms. Rodriguez, to her uh, left, is also uh, a bartender at 4616 Eastern Avenue. Ms. Rodriguez is primarily here to serve as the city resident as Ms. Castro moved to Dundalk about a year and a half ago, just over the city county line. Uh, nevertheless, Ms. Castro is extremely close to the bar and can be at the bar in less than 10 minutes if there's ever any kind of problem, even, even five minutes. Uh, so I think there'll be good, continue to be good administration. And uh, that's really all I have at this time. Do they have relationships with community organizations? Um, I don't believe that they, they have reached out. And um, Greeks, they're just on the border between Greektown and Highland Town, but I've learned they are right over the line and technically in Greektown. Um, a lot of uh, bar owners uh, whose uh, English is not very good, they sometimes don't uh, envelope themselves with the community association. Um, but certainly the community association reaches out to them if they have any problems. And interestingly enough, uh, this bar is within eyesight of uh, El Rincón uh, Troncoleño, uh, a bar whose license was revoked by this very board about uh, six weeks ago. So they certainly understand the ramifications of malfeasance. Okay, well, I think, uh, again, we might ask Mr. Alkheimer to try to uh, foster some connection so that there is that ongoing uh, community involvement. Um, the Sir, commissioners have questions? I have none. No questions. Uh, do we have public comment, Mr. Blendy? If any member of the public wishes to testify on this matter before the board, please use the raise your hand feature in the WebEx platform. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any members of the public who wish to testify. Okay. Mr. Fogelman, then on the basis of the materials contained in the application and your proffer, I would vote to approve the application to transfer ownership of this BG7 beer, wine, and liquor license with continued outdoor table service. Commissioner? Commissioner Guy, based upon a review of the evidence and the proffer of Mr. Fogelman, I also would vote to approve the application to transfer ownership with continuation of the outdoor table service. Based upon the application and the proffer from Mr. Fogelman, I too would approve the application to transfer ownership with continuation of outdoor table service. Thank you. Was it to the record? Uh, all right, Ms. Fogelman, good luck with that. Yes, and thank you. And thank you uh, for Mr. Ac uh, uh, volunteer, Mr. Ockheimer. Uh, we have uh, English speaking uh, employees We'll be happy to facilitate uh, with all communication. Thank you. Okay, that would be good. Um, Mr. Blendy, is that the end of our docket? Uh, yes, that concludes uh, this hearing and um, applicant and council will receive follow up with further instructions via US mail. And that does in, uh, in conclude all the hearings before the board today. So, okay, well, we'll, our, uh, the commissioners will make their binders available so that they can be replenished for next week. And I thank everybody at the Liquor Board for their help and those who participated today. And uh, have a pleasant day. We'll see you in a week. Thank you all. Thank you. The board will be in recess until Thursday, April 29th, 2021. And the board shall post on its website and provide notice to applicants and attorneys and conduct a virtual hearing on that date. And if any member of the public or any applicant has any question, please call our office at 410-396-4377 between 8.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. with any questions or concerns you have on this and any other matter. And that concludes everything we have today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.